Hi. Hi. Did you get my text that we're staying home? Yes. Are you happy? Yeah. Do you feel better now? I <laughs> just, you know, <laughs> you know, bef before this virus, I wanted everybody to stay away from me. I know. You know, I, I, before this virus, everyone wants to shake hands and, and it's like, I'm not into it. And now, now everybody is like coming out of the woodworks with these like neuroses. And I'm, to be honest with you, I'm a little worried that it's going to take away my thing. <laughs> Have you Peter pooped your pants recently? I uh, actually did the other day, and I washed my pants, and it looked like it didn't all come out, so I had to wash them again. What happened? I go to the bathroom all the time. Every five minutes, I have to poop. Wait, you pooped your pants the other day, really? I swear to God. Uh, you're not taping me, are you? No, but why are you <laughs> pooping your pants all the time? Because I mean, it's not all the time. I just poop my pants sometimes because <laughs> I have to go, and I can't hold it in. And it's like that time when I came over to... What, oh, that. I know, but I sometimes don't make it there. Like when I came to you, uh, to Betty's house, and then I pooped on her on her rug. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I tried. I ran into the bathroom, pulled down my pants as I was going into the bathroom, not knowing no. that it was already starting to come out, and a big plop fell out on her rug. If you don't have time, can't you get, like? Do you understand once it, you feel like you have to poop, there's a sense of urgency. Maybe you need to get to the bathroom faster than yes, you think. Yes, but I was walking to her house. Yeah, but what happened the other day? Where were you? I was walking to the bathroom and it just came faster than I thought. I <laughs> need to stop at a tree. <laughs> oh, well. So last night I started thinking about my parents, my parents who are in their mid 60s and who work in retail. My dad, as you know, works at one of the most amazing flooring companies in the world. Shout out to Marshall Rug Gallery. We'll cut to a clip. If you're looking for just the right flooring, you need choices. I'm wondering how necessary is it for him to go into work? Both my parents work in their mid-60s, and money is tight. They were planning on coming to Los Angeles for a week in April. They're not going to come now. Use that week off of work that you were going to take this week instead. I found it difficult to talk to my parents about lifestyle changes over the years. For 20 years... I've been teaching my mom how to wash her hands. My mom thinks that she, she puts the soap on her hand and then she just puts it under the water and then the soap does its magic trick. No, mom, you gotta fucking wash your hands. I remember in 11th grade, I learned about emulsifying agents. The soap connects to the dirt. The water connects to the soap. It pulls it all off the hand. You have to get the soap connected to the dirt. 20 years I'm teaching my mom to wash her hands. She's finally listening. I find it's tough to talk to parents. They've figured it out. They've been here for 65 years. They know what they're doing. Yesterday, I wrote a post on Instagram, basically talking to moms and dads, saying, hey, if you work in a retail job and you don't have to go into work, take the week off. Sincerely, 20 and 30 year olds. People are going ape shit. And it's tough. But like, people take vacations for a week. Take your vacation now. And we're just looking at the patterns. Look at what's happening. Everybody's shutting down. Let's make it a little easier on the healthcare systems. But I'm, I realized from Instagram last night that I can't talk to the masses. Let me just talk to my parents. And if anybody could empathize with this, maybe you could relay it to yours or to yourself. Hey, mom and dad, you're in your mid-60s. I don't want you to get sick. Stay at home. You don't need to go sell rugs, which, by the way, some of the greatest rugs I've ever seen. We'll cut to a clip. Carpet, hardwood, rugs. There were a lot of comments I got about how people saying that, that they have kids to feed and they can't take off work. It's fucking horrible. If you have to go to work, you're going to go to work. Those of you watching this now, leave some comments below because I understand the need to go to work. Restaurants don't need to shut down, but they can encourage takeout orders. There are ways of mitigating some of these things. If you must work, try and work from home. If you can't work from home, try to limit the gatherings of the people that are coming to your work. If you want to take your shoes off sweatshirt, but you don't really have that much money, use promo code boobs. There are ways of figuring out how to save money. Hello. Hi, Grandma. Rickola, 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 boob. What's going on, TC? Nothing much. I'm recording my uh, podcast intro, but I was just thinking about you and what you're doing and if you're staying in. 
I'm going out of my fucking, fucking, fucking mind. Especially with no sports on. I can stay in the house if I had, like, sports to watch a little bit. But without sports, with everything, I am, I'm telling you something. You can really go out of your fucking mind. Oh, my God. I'm not, you know, I watched tonight, I watched Curb Your Enthusiasm. That I like. Even Shark Tank Friday night. It was a new one. And two, uh, three of the people that were on, were, I think they were out of their minds. They were so bad. I never saw, where did they let these people on? What the fuck were they doing? I mean, I never saw the guy with the, the yarmulke with the, with the things hanging from the orthodox. What was he crazy? Yeah, he projected that uh, he in three years he'll be making two hundred eighty million. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. What was he selling again, Ricky? I forgot some kind of crap. Yeah, uh, a, a, a sharing service of of people's po- pools. Oh yeah, that's really that. Especially now, that's be oh, that would go over very big. <laughs> he'll make six million. He'll make six million crap. What do you? What have you uh, been I, eating? I, do you have groceries? Vodka I might get low on, but <laughs> what, how many bottles are you down to? I got one bottle in the freezer, a half of it left, and I got bourbon, too, so. And I still have some scotch left from you. <laughs> well, I miss you, Graham, yeah. so I just want to make sure that you're staying in. If you guys enjoyed Grandma Gloria, please check out episode 27 of Take Your Shoes Off with special guest Grandma Gloria. Betty is watching Moneyball. She loves Brad Pitt. And you know what? I, it doesn't make me jealous at all. I take that back when, when, when we were watching the Academy Awards and Brad Pitt won. And the way Betty was looking at the TV, like... Like, uh, it would be the way I, it's, uh, it's literally the way I look at chocolate. Like, I don't want to fuck it, but I need it. I, I, I was feeling a little jealous. I was, but I, that's the only time I felt jealous about it. <laughs> Hi, Betty. Can I ask you a, a question? When are you supposed to eat the quarantine food? Like now? I believe the, the the protocol for quarantine food is the same as if you go to a restaurant when the with fries. When the fries come, you take some and you put them on your plate for an emergency. But then you eat from the communal fries. You spoke to your parents? My mom talked to me about how much she poops her pants and made sure I wasn't recording. And I said, no, I'm going to call her and ask her if I could put it up there. But that's really the only good stuff out of this. I mean, she shit on my floor. You yeah. can <laughs> Yeah, I know. She talked about how when she pooped on your rug. <laughs> For fuck's sake. She said, I just, she said, I can't I make you just it. just go like, earlier? She said, I was walking to her apartment. Said, how did you do it a couple of days ago? She's like, I didn't make it. <laughs> oh, fuck. <laughs> Coronavirus, like the event where we learned our parents didn't know they had grown up and were in the risk age group, mm. but cannot be told that. And then I realized it's all the older men who just don't give a fuck. You know, most, more specifically than men, it's straight white men, right, Bet? <laughs> yeah, babe. Straight white men are the problem. They're the ones spreading the corona. I'm pretty sure they were the people that bought all the toilet paper. No, 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 no. That was women. Women bought the toilet paper. <laughs> okay, we do use more. <laughs> yeah. Women have to wipe after a pee and a poop. Guys only have to wipe after a pee. Men are responsible for the hole in the ozone layer. Because of uh, all the, the all the farming that they do with killing cows. No, it's from all the farting that farts. they do. And then the cows suck the farts up through their mouth. Men go around farting in cows' mouths and the cows... And then it's like in Dragon Ball Z, you know, and they're... Like, yeah. So you're telling me that the hole of the ozone layer is because straight white men are farting into cows' mouths? Yes. All right. You heard it here first. Betty, thank you so much for calling in. My name is Rick Glassman. Enjoy this episode of a podcast and scoot do. Right, babe? Or should I end it a different way? No, end it that way. Okay. I love you. Happy quarantine. Bye. All right. Let's get to editing this fucking thing. Scoot do. Blabbity blue. Scoot D. Oh, yeah! Let me know if I need to move this. I will let you know. Okay. So, because of a one man show, yeah. three cameras. I love it. This is so. Minutes. Look out. Like, I mean, wow. I mean, this is. Uh, you got a lot of equipment here. A lot of equipment. Always buying. And then is, is this always up, or uh, or do you take it down I, and uh, live in your apartment? stay up. I break down the microphones and the cameras. Okay. It's a living room, too. How many do you do, do, you do of these? Uh, like. Uh, like once a week, or it it, it, it varies. Yeah, uh, I will do. I will do uh, some weeks. I'll I'll try to bang out like three to four. 
And oh, then okay. I, I wanted to at least do one a week. How are the levels? Uh, it sounds pretty good to me. Um, yeah. Oh, let me turn up one more light. Sure. Uh, but I, what I wanted to tell you was, you'll see me every 10 minutes. Yeah. Looking over. Like I just noticed that's turned on. Uh-huh. Oh, just to see. Uh, to make sure they're on. Oh, I see. Okay. They turn off. So. Oh, all right. Okay. If I'm having a conversation <laughs> with you. Right. And then you start going like this. I'm going to be like, am I, what's happening? Got it. I want to let you know. Got it. Either something's not interesting mm -hmm. or I'm checking the cameras. Okay. Okay. So it is one. So it might be something's not interesting. It, it doesn't always have to be just a camera. I might be talking about something and you might just drift. We have started, right? I'm, I'm, we agree we've started? I, you know, when, when does anything start really? Expand on that. Yeah. Well, once again... There's a starting line, right? But you can, as you as you le get up out of bed, mm. and you're like, I got to get to that starting line. You've already started by getting out of bed to get to the starting line. You you're starting you're starting the starting. I'm so just, sorry. just in case there's any confusion, so sorry, I Jane. was not checking if the cameras were on. That was me. Just no, that was I would, me. I would hope, that was a golf. I would hope you 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 turned away for that. So, Joe. In the podcast game, yeah, we, we give intros. Okay, so like we're gonna, I'm gonna record this with you, All and right. then before it comes out, I'm gonna be anxious and stressed, and I'm busy, and I have to record another little mini episode, which is the intro. Okay, which is gonna explain where we met and who you are, and ah. what you do, and why I loved you, and blah 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 blah. Uh, okay, I, I don't want to have to do that. Yeah, well, no, that's extra work for you. It's another episode. You know, it's another ep. It's a whole Setting other thing. Up. Yeah, and the, yeah, I don't want to put you through that. So why don't? What we, do you need from me? I, I'm what, here to help. This is great. Yeah. So I would love to just record the intro for this now. Okay. And I'll keep it in the episode. Like right now, people are gonna watch this, uh -huh. and they're gonna see the behind the scenes of where the intro came from. But the uh, first thing they're gonna see, yeah, is the intro. Okay. And it's gonna be like intro. Yes. But what I would love. <laughs> if you could do the intro for me, but you okay. don't want to play yourself, I'd imagine. No, I mean, I could. Yeah, sure. I don't mind playing myself. Well, because I'm going to ask you to say some of your credits. It might. I, I oh, think it might oh be, yeah, that I hate. So if you just snap your fingers. Perfect. Now, I don't want to give you much direction. You know who you are and what you've done. But the home audience might be, and I apologize to my TWSO goblins, fucking idiots. And they need to know. Been, we all know you as White Hot American Summer. Not everybody knows you as Wreck-It Ralph. So if we could just, in 30 seconds-ish, look to camera, say, how do we want to do this? How do we want to do this? I think we just... Take the stash off for a second. Yeah. Yeah. All right, so what were you Is saying? the mustache on? The, is the mustache on? <laughs> can we push in to show that the mustache tape is still stuck on his face and he just looks nervous like he's, his lip is sweating? Is it on? It's not on? All right. I'll just do an intro. <laughs> I, uh, look, here's here's the intro. The intro is I'm a guy <laughs> <laughs> already already bailing on it. <laughs> uh, yeah, do the intro. No, 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 no yeah. please go on. I like yeah. I'm a guy. <laughs> um, <laughs> this is why this is why we had so much trouble doing this, like getting sure. this organized, because I I'm uncomfortable with like stuff like this. Like who care? Like who cares? Who, if you're if you're watching this podcast, mm -hmm. I, I feel like you know you like comedy, right? Dude, this is perfect to camera. Okay, you like comedy. I'm a face. You're like, ah, oh, there's that guy. I'm fine with that guy. Put the Chiron up. That guy. I'm okay with that. I don't need everyone to know my name, Joe Latrulio. They're like, Latrulio? Is it Latruglio? Is it Latrulio? It doesn't matter. I'm that guy, right? What are you comfortable with? You know, so, and I do, I've done, I've been in things. In fact, oh, that guy who does, oh, he's, he was in that thing and that other thing. Name a couple of things. They don't have to be things you've actually been in. Oh, great. This is well, your opportunity to. This, uh, you might have uh, heard of a little movie called Gremlins 2. Wait, out of all the movies you could have put yourself in, you didn't even pick the first Gremlins? No. No, it's, <laughs> yeah, that's easy. <laughs> That's an easy. That's an easy pick. People would Gremlin. think he's lying. Well, right, he wasn't in Gremlins. No one saw Gremlins too, so they're like, oh, maybe he was. Maybe he was. He was. When did that? When did Gremlins come out? Nineteen eighty-seven. 
Is when the first one came out? Second one. Oh, okay. Yeah, the guy's like, uh, he could have been 17 years old. He might have been in Gremlins 2. They won't know. And they're definitely not going to go watch Gremlins 2 to see whether or not I was telling the truth. You know what? We're going to put up a clip. You know, like just feeling like completely different. Right. And so then I, so what happened was I drank early. So when I moved to San Diego, when I was in middle school, I would get drunk and I would just suck guys' dicks. <laughs> You know, we're back. Um, you know, the, the, oh, this, the, the, the one that you probably know me from mm. is um, Humanoids from the Deep, mm -hmm. which is a 1979 uh, B Schlock movie. Uh huh. And that's what people are like, ah, B Schlock. Is that a person's yeah. name or is that like a uh, way of saying a B movie in a cool way? way? Uh, that's the, the latter. Really? Yeah. yeah. What's the Schlock? Uh, because it's like, it's Schlock. It's like a, it's a B Schlock movie? Yeah. But then if schlach inherently makes it less than, then why call it a b-schlach rather than just a schlach? Because because it's it's, just, it's under a b-movie. Okay, so it goes like this. It goes a movie, yeah. b-movie, b-schlach, c. So schlach is a minus? Schlach is a minus. So above yeah. a b-movie, yeah. but under an a-movie would be an a-schlach. Yeah. What's an a-schlach? Oh, I mean, you're, you're, you're talking about probably Airplane 2. You're talking about... Um, <laughs> That's actually, yes... <laughs> I rewatched uh, Airplane too, and like it's, it's not Airplane. It's not Airplane at all. At all. But it's better than most. But it's better than a B movie. It's better than a B movie. Yeah. And we'll actually cut to a clip of a B movie. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I am a B, and uh, you know I'm not supposed to be doing this. We're back. Seinfeld is so good. His voice for that is really good. He was built to play a B. Yeah. Joe, I asked you to come on here mm -hmm. for the first time in 1996, seven. I want to say that's wrong. Then say it. It's a bald face lie. No, I've been wanting to have you on here for a little bit. For and a little bit, yeah. It makes sense. As, as the game goes, yeah. you, know, you have to find a time. Find a time. But also, you know, uh, I'll also say that I'm, uh, uh, I'm lazy. I don't like to go out. I don't like to do stuff unless I have to do it. Um, and then when I'm doing it, I love to do it. <laughs> So I'm sorry. What were you boring me with? Yeah, no. <laughs> no that one, you were checking that. I was checking camera. It actually that. It, one of those rare instances where it was both things. <laughs> no, that was very interesting. You were saying something about the movie, whatever. Yeah. So I have these sweatshirts on sale. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> no, I um, you know, I don't, I, I don't like to uh, do a lot of these only because I, I often it. feel uncomfortable. Yeah. Would talking you, about. Could we talk career. about that? Sure. Not the talking about career part, but specifically yeah. in the podcast because yeah, I know people that don't want to do podcasts. Yeah. They come over, we have a great time. Yeah. But I, I've never explored right. the why they don't. I've more just yeah. like selfishly tried to hurdle. Come on. Well, I, for me, you know, I feel like I'm so self-involved already with the type of career I have that like then to kind of talk about it more, it's like, hey, hey, hey just let's take a break. Let's, uh, you know. Right. So that's part of that. Part of it is, you know, I don't think uh, there's much to uh, acting, being an actor, mm -hmm. uh, Craft talk is always weird. Um, I, you know, and sometimes I, I find myself in moods where I really get into it. It depends on who I'm with. Mm -hmm. Like, I, you know, if I'm with someone who's like really into it, I find myself suddenly get dragged into it. But then I feel like kind of a, a, a pretentious idiot. Like halfway in, I'm like, oh, in my right. head, I'm like, what, what am I, why am I talking about, uh, uh, you know, how I prep so, uh, a role? You know, Why is that such a, a boring thing? Because you're around that. Uh, it, it feels, uh, no, I guess you know it has issues to do with like, uh, you know, the the worth of that vocation to me. You know, but are you attributing worth to it? Yeah. Why? It's your job. Well, because I want to kind of do something that is a value that I feel is a value in some way. Interesting. So, is talking yeah. about the craft making you feel like what you do isn't valuable? Yeah, it's like it, in in a way. It, it, well, it makes it feel like it's too important. You know, you, you don't have like, and again, not comparing. You don't have like firefighters and doctors who are like, well, you know, the thing about you know when I do the bypass is they of course just, they do. No, of no, course they, they do. They, 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 they talk they, about that all the time, just not on the podcasts. <laughs> okay. All right. Well, fine. Here's my point. Here's my point. Although there may be a doctor podcast. I don't know. Well, but Dr. Like, Drew. Real doctor, though. Like, you know, Drew, listen. <laughs> your was, camera. Your camera. 
Dr. Drew. You know, we'll put some music on this. I apologize. Give, a, give an apology. Give a real apology. <clears throat> um, uh, we'll get a push in on this. Sometimes uh, when you're doing bits and jokes with friends, uh, things just come out because it's like a back and forth, a give and take. And then they come out and you're like, oh, I shouldn't have said that. That's wrong. That's how I felt about saying Dr. Drew wasn't a real doctor, which he is. And uh, to be quite honest, I enjoy listening to him talk. I'm sorry, Dr. Drew. It's good. <laughs> Just start some Dr. Drew beef, some DDB. Um, so, so yeah, I, I of course doctors talk about it. I guess in the I think know, this is the, less about you not. <clears throat> I think it's less about you feeling acting is unimportant, unimportant and more about. And I, I'm going to say it. What? You're anti-Semitic. Yeah. No, no. I think it's more about you yeah. feeling insecure about. It. Yeah, well, that's very true. I, I don't know any actor who's super secure. Guilty. One only with a name like Glassman. Why is it I not mean, a good so name? So fragile. <laughs> so fragile, and yet you're so strong. Thank you. <laughs> uh, also, I also I get annoyed when I hear people talk about it. Right. So I think I think that's a big part of it. So and also good for them for talking about it. Who am I? Like so, I get annoyed. So. I I could argue either end of this, and I feel this way on a podcast where I'm usually having people in the entertainment business on. Yeah. At a certain point, it it feels, and I don't know if I'm using this word right, but uh, blach. What was what was the word? Schlock. Schlock. Yeah. It's like this it's is schlock, schlock conversation. It's schlock. It's yeah. And it's because it, I feel that way when it's forced, and I'm trying to find a balance in this mm. podcast between interview yeah. and conversation. Right. When I had, I had David Wayne on here, uh -huh. and in case I don't do the intro, let me quickly say we met working on David's movie, A Futile and Stupid Gesture, yeah. and he is and has been a role model of mine, uh, pun cool. not intended, but for yeah. years. Yeah. And when he was on, having him here, I'm asking him all the questions. Right. I want, the questions, turn the cameras off, I'm still asking him these questions. So I felt I like it was, it. Yeah. this isn't... Schlach. It wasn't. Uh, this is all me in my brain. This isn't like anyone else. And it, it yeah, it, it has to do with me feeling comfortable with uh, feeling like anything I say really is relevant or anyone wants to hear. Yeah. You know, so I understand. You know, that it's more from that. Like, this is very easy because this feels like a real conversation uh, to me. You know, like the behind, you know, wondering why I'm uncomfortable with podcasts. Um, you know, and it's it's that reason. I just feel like, am I, who who wants to listen? You know, to me? I, when I first met you, it was on the movie, and you were very much in the pocket of process. You um, had a scar in something oh. that wasn't scripted, and I remember oh, you were right. telling me it's an amalgamum of all these different characters. Yes, and you were talking to makeup about it and wanted yes. this, and they needed David's yes. permission. And you're like, no, I already did this, and yes, it was very, it was very like, yes, the way I am. With with my mustaches, right. <laughs> I get it, but I know nobody else cares. When I'm do like that, yes, absolutely. When I'm like in that mode, then right. it feels right to me because then I feel like I'm doing my job. I my was job so into like, it. Really, Your energy oh, about oh, the good. amount of effort that you put in yeah. explaining to makeup how it has to be and where it has to be and why it has to be. Uh, yeah, um, yeah. That's that well, was that's, a big connected moment me, for me. That makes me feel good. Thanks. But that's the yeah. opposite of what you're talking about. Yeah. Yeah, but but also I'm actually doing the work there. Like here, this is your I'm saying. Kind of, look what I did. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah a little bit of that. Um, your wife's oh, that's an okay. Actress. Yeah, yeah. She's you, is that what's that like? Really? Uh, in, in, in the it, it re, talking it, about yourself aspect. Oh well, we both are pretty vain people. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I think so. Um, also, it, I'm it, sorry I cut you off. You were saying something different. No. What were you going to say before I, I talked about the talking about yourself thing? I can't remember. Fuck we'll me. go. That's no, right. It'll come. It'll come back. Um, no, no. Beth and I. Um, it, it's great to have a, a partner as a as fellow actor because then you know all your kind of petty whining and and stuff uh, doesn't fall on deaf ears. Give me an example of a petty whine. Um, yeah, well, they, you know, they could have moved the scene up. I don't know why, <laughs> you know, we had to shoot that at the end of the day. We were in the same location, but I guess because he had to make that thing work there that it, it wouldn't have worked for them, that type of stuff. Right. 
Yeah. Um, just in case people aren't understanding that what that means, uh, you go in for a day, you have all your scenes and you want your scenes to be all back to back to back. Sometimes you do a couple of scenes and then there's four scenes in between and then you have a little one at the end of the day. Yeah. It's like, why couldn't they just bang that out? Yeah. Yeah. Right. Petty stuff like that. Right. Yeah. So, you know, that's, that's very nice to, um, and she uh, understands, she understands, she understands that. Yeah. Do you, uh, uh, Brooklyn nine, nine, and I don't want to get too much into mm -hmm. what you are saying is uncomfortable for you is, is is the best is the best network comedy on thank you and uh it's one of my oh. it's one of the best comedies but i say network because it's very hard to be very funny on a network it is yeah um it's such a man i i mean it's it's such a incredible uh a gift we use that word a lot um to be on the show because it, it really has kind of blossomed into uh, something that uh, is much bigger than um, I think any of us thought it was going to be. Uh, and you just realize, having been in this business for as long as I have, like 30 years, that, uh, you know, this stuff comes by once in a lifetime, you know. And, and You're saying particular roles, jobs? Uh, uh, the jobs that last this long. Right. Of this, what, what of you, the, you, of this six, six years, seven years? We'll be starting our eighth season and starting shooting our eighth season. You've done seven. Our, our, so our seventh season is premiering uh, February 6th. So our seventh season is about to premiere. We're done shooting it. Um, we're going into our eighth shooting it uh, in July. And um, yeah, just the idea that something can last this long and the pedigree, the writing and, and, and the people that you work with is still uh, such a joy to be around. And you just know you know, after being doing this for so long, like yeah. that doesn't happen a lot, you know? And then, and then, you know, I went through like a guilt phase of like, you know, so many other really good people that have been busting their ass too. I mean, they, they deserve this too. And, you know, you're catching me in a very sensitive day, I guess. Uh, I, I love it. I, I don't want to make you feel uncomfortable I'm not, in this, but I'm, 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 I'm so I'm interested in, in, in this. And oh, I want to ask okay. some questions about that. Sure. Uh, a, a, and I want to make sure I remember, I go back to the idea of why, this comedy on a network is so funny. And I want to hear your opinions working on such, you, you're, the comedies you work on are the most niche comedies. Yeah, they are. And this is translates to a big audience. Yeah. But uh, feeling insecure that other people do it, is it like you don't deserve to be there or you feel bad that other people aren't there? I feel bad that other people aren't there. No, I-, I, I Peers? Feel, peers. Peers and, and, um, and, and yeah, peers. Peers and, and also people that I don't know well, but I, but I see, you know, um, you know, if I'll run into someone um, that's a fan of the show, let's say at a coffee shop, I'm like, oh, what's your name? Like, uh, you know, I'm, I'm was that I'm an what's actor. your name? You kind of trailed over. Yeah, a yeah, 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 yeah. Okay. I like, yeah. What's uh, what's your name? And they'll tell me their name, and then they'll they'll uh, they'll talk about what they're doing, and I could see like that kind of fire and the right. passion and the thrill to like meet someone who's on a show, and and I remember being that way. You know, and I remember how badly I wanted it, you know. And Anybody so, that you saw? Yeah, that I respected, that like was on a show or something that I saw that I ran into. Um, and you know, saying like, I, oh, I want to be like him. Yeah, yeah. And, and just meeting them, just remember, and, and saying like, oh, yeah, I, uh, I'm, I'm studying film, you know, and whatever it was at the time, that idea of really wanting it so bad, like I, uh, you know, I, I, I could relate to that. And so right. sometimes, uh, I, you know, I, I want... I want those people to have it too. Uh, you know, I, I the work that I've done so far, I've you know, I feel I've earned. I feel like I've earned yeah. that. But uh, you know, you get to a point, you, I feel like, do I? You know, I, mm. it, you know what I mean. Like, you, 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 I don't know. It's it's hard to kind of like pinpoint. But um, do I? As in like. Are you good enough or are you better? What does that mean? Do I, where do you go from? I belong here to I do I, what, what's the different mindset? Because I guess part of it is like, you see how, how random it is too. You know, how lucky you can be to get a job. So, uh, you yeah. know, how much did my work pay? Is it all the work that I did? Is that why I'm here? Or is it uh, like a fluke? A, a couple things happened in my favor. To get well, me a here. couple things happened that, in your you know, favor. Isn't necessarily a fluke. It's like, you no, said lucky. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, that's true too. I want to know the difference between you feeling guilty that other people aren't doing what you're doing versus you just empathizing and wanting for them. Because those are two mm. very different things to mm. me. Say that again. Why me feeling guilty? Yeah, so, so I, 
let, let me put it in very small potatoes that yeah. people listening could probably empathize with. I have a podcast. Right. Uh, it's a new podcast, and it's been doing really well recently. Okay. And it's for a podcast as long as I've been doing, it's like, oh, the guests I've been having on and the numbers it's getting on YouTube, it's that's yeah. a cool podcast, right? Yeah. Uh, I have a friend who's just started a podcast uh, recently, and I don't think it matters, but I feel like I don't want to say names right now uh -huh. just because... I don't know what sure. I'm going to reveal. Uh, and he's having a hard time with it. People aren't willing to come on as guests and blah, 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 blah. And fuck, I want him to have these people. Like, I want to yeah. come on his podcast, do this stuff. Yeah, yeah. But I don't at all feel like... That's just Guilty. because I want for him. Yeah. I don't at all feel like... No, I'm working my ass off over yeah, here. Yeah, yeah. I don't yeah. feel guilty... The, even the littlest bit. Oh yeah, yeah. I don't feel guilty that I have a show. Like I, it, you know, and that—that's not what I mean to say. I, I guess, I guess, I'm coming to terms with the uh, very precariousness of being successful as an actor in this business. Like how there's so many moving parts yeah. that some people don't sink into. And I feel that's a shame. I feel that's a bummer because it doesn't make, you know, they, they don't want it any less than I do, right. you know? And, and so I guess I'm saying that the kind of happenstance of it, I'm not demeaning the amount of work I've done or, or that I deserve to be here or that I don't deserve to be here. I feel I do, but it's, it's that, I don't know, it, it, the, the number of moving parts I feel sometimes is so random that it's like, it, it could happen to anybody. Yeah, I, I don't want to call you out, but I'm, I, I feel like we're dodging something here that I'm so interested in, because I do connect to this yeah. a lot. Yeah. Not in the podcast way, but mm -hmm. you did say you felt guilty. And you also said in another way, like, I, know, I'm I, I deserve to be here, but do I? I, I want conflicted. I don't know. I don't know. I, I, like, I don't... Uh... Do you think you're funny? Yeah. Yeah. Right. Mm -hmm. um, I, yeah. I, I'm going to go back into this, but I got to tell you... Uh, and I was <laughs> just completely I just, confused you. I just told uh, my buddy, John DeWalt, shout out to John DeWalt. He, uh, you met him at, you wouldn't remember, but he came to the a futile screening that we did. Okay. And we are huge fans of Wet Hot American Summer. And his his and he said this the last night he was excited you were coming on. He thinks the greatest comedy moment in any comedy is you in Wet Hot when they, to us the joke uh, when they're going down. The, you're watching these kids at camp, yeah, and the, you guys are stuck uh, in in the lake, yeah. the river or whatever, and you need to go get help. Yeah, so you leave, right, and. Then there's a big scene that happens right. in the water. Uh, they're doing it. They're fixing it. They're making oh, it. When, when I'm looking off screen and I'm describing what I'm seeing. You're describing what you're seeing. And to us, the joke is they don't want to film that scene. <laughs> right. It's just yeah. way easier just to film you talking Correct. about it. That is the joke. And yeah. the passion you have in it. Yeah. <laughs> and, the, and the drama right. and the, yeah. that happens in a 10 second, 15 yeah. second period. You, you did it. Yeah. And yeah. I don't know if I could put a clip up just because of obvious sure. reasons, but sure. I kind of, sure. I want to. I, it's, yeah, well, that, thanks. That's uh, yeah, that's one of those things where you, the 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 comedy of it, it lands much later. Like I, I remember thinking it was funny at the time, but I also later and after the movie's edited or later ten years later after the movie's edited. Yeah, because I remember at the time it felt like it was so rushed that it wasn't. It, 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 I missed. I, I at the time I thought the joke was like let's really. It, it felt too quick. It felt too short. But actually what works now is that it, it, it isn't So at the long. time you thought what? You, you thought it was going to be, you needed to be longer for yes. what? Just to play it? To play it, yes. Yeah, it was yes. so funny because of how fast the arc happens. Yeah, yeah. Uh, the reason I bring that up is it's just cool to hear somebody sitting next to me who... According to my friend and I, I don't I, who were comedy brothers. Yeah, that's just the, the greatest comedy scene in something. <laughs> and then to say like, yeah, but do I? It's like, come <laughs> on, you know. Yeah, I, it, I love Look, that. I, I want to hear. Yeah, that. well, that, it's true because let me tell you, like, we're all feeling it, man. We are, you know, we're all. What do you, not, all, what do you mean? I the think insecurity. All, yeah, yeah. Right. We're all feeling that insecurity. Like, I, you know, I, you know, I certainly do. It's always nice. You know, when you're on, you know, when you're in sync. Like right now, I know I'm off. Right now, that's and so. I, I, no, no, but li oh. listen. Like I know that right now, I'm I, because I'm very self-reflective now. I'm a little self-conscious, and so I, I get tripped up. And then when you when you know you're in a in a bit, we're doing a bit, or you're doing a joke. 
Uh, and you know when you're in the groove, right? Yeah. And and then you're like, I can do no wrong here. Uh -huh. You're invincible. You know, you're invincible. And so, uh, you know, in in the wet hot, and in in the, throughout that whole movie, that's how I was feeling. Throughout most of the stuff, you were that just I in do, the pocket the whole movie. I was in the pocket the whole movie. And is that your first it, movie? That was my. It was either that movie or the station agent. I think it was wet hot. Yeah, and yeah, I think it was wet hot. And so. Uh, in 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 that movie and most of the movies, I feel like I'm I'm in sync. Because so you're because you're playing a character. Yeah, and and I'm I don't know. I there haven't been many movies where I felt like off, like untentative. Mm. I'm not saying there aren't movies where I'm not funny. I'm sure there are moments that aren't really great. I'm sure there are, but but I've never felt like tentative. Tentative. Like, am I? Is this right? Right. Like, like and so. Um, I guess my point is I feel most tentative and most hesitant in moments of like this, of self-reflection and wondering where I, you know, where my value really lies, uh, you know, in the business mm -hmm. and in my talent. I'm feeling emotional right now. You are? Yeah. Are you, yeah. Like, I, I knew it. I knew it because I've talked about some of my podcasts before, but sometimes my eyes water and I can't, and I know why, you know, I'm feeling you're like a I'm sensitive trying. person. Yeah. But right now I'm trying to, in a moment with you, but also aware that I'm on a podcast and I don't want to just sit in something for a little bit, <laughs> try to understand what it is. Yeah. But I, I think I, I have an idea. It's hard. I don't know what it is. I, I, I've, I've, you know, me kind of talking this like this in such kind of abstract, you know, uh, concepts, like it's, it's it's hard to do. I'm just trying to kind of be open and vulnerable because, uh, like I said, like I don't like talking a lot about this, and yeah. this is a way for me to just kind of hack in, hack in, yeah, you know, just like well, get past that and just see what over this past you want to talk ten about. minutes. There have been objectively proper moments to snap to have that mustache be put back on you. And I've had to calculate not to do it for two reasons. Yeah. One, I didn't want you to stop saying what you were saying. Right. And two, and more importantly, the mustache tape issue. Right. But there have yeah. been some great moments where right. you're just talking about, and I'm just feeling a little, and I want you to put it on and then to I was- To continue that, to continue no, then that. For, then for you to be, you, basically you're confident in a mustache is what I wanted to play. Oh, I see. <laughs> you know what I'm oh, saying? I see, I see. Which would be yeah, easy, yeah. one, because yeah. there's a game attached to it, right. so right. we could hide. Yeah, And right. two, you know, we could snap and collect ourselves, you know, pick, figure it out, man. Let's do this. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> you yeah, know, yeah. And edit around it. <laughs> but man. Um, yeah. Well, look. <clears throat> the format of the show is people never see. Mm. And we're going to keep this in because the, the my TYSO goblins need to see it. But people don't see the actual act. People think that. It just happens. And you, we did no snap, so now everybody saw it. Oh, oh, I see. You got to do snap first? Uh, yes. I see. Yeah. I see. Already that, that, that adhesive is... I know slipping. why, too. I could talk, the, I could talk mustache yeah. technique with you, but first, first, why don't you put it back on? Snap again? Yeah. You know, because of the way you said snap again, I'm not editing any of that out. Just the... <laughs> Uh, the, this is silly. I love it. If uh, I yeah. want to edit something where where you talk about, yeah, I don't know. Sometimes uh, you know I'm usually <clears> in <throat> the groove, but sometimes I'm feeling a little insecure. Like when, and then I want to show you <laughs> fumbling over this mush step again. <laughs> this is the most insecure about the mustache bit. <laughs> Great. Uh, coming back to this, the do I? Do, I'm yeah. good enough. Am I? Do I? I belong yeah. here, but do I? Type of thing. Will that ever go away? Oh. Yeah, uh, no, maybe. What level is higher other than creating your own stuff as an actor? What level is higher than being on a successful show that's 20 oh. plus episodes a season for eight years? What's higher than that? Yeah, I mean, I know you, you could say, you know, being Sandberg, it's higher meaning like credit wise. Like at what point does one go from do I belong here to I do belong here? Is it based on what credentials you have, or is it just based oh. on the, per the personality? Oh, I see. I, you know, no, I, I think, no, I don't think there's any award or credit where, 
were suddenly like, I, I finally do belong. Right. <clears throat> that's why. That's why it's sometimes I feel silly uh, talking about it because I think it's just a general existential question of of like, uh, is this it? You know. Um, you know. I I feel that uh, the work ethic I've never had a problem with. I'm always keep myself busy, and so I, I don't feel like um, uh, like I'm. What am I trying to say? God, I wish I knew what I was trying to say. We'll be right back with another word from Marshall Rug Gallery. So make the right choice and visit Marshall Carpet One and Rug Gallery. And we promise, with more than 50 years as a family-owned business, we've got you covered. We're back. Those are great rugs. Yeah. Great rugs. Thank you. Rugs I'd like to walk barefoot on. Barefoot without socks? Bare, barefoot with socks. No, barefoot without socks. Barefoot. Um, how are you feeling? You're having a hard time right now. I am, man. Um, and, and I... I mean, I, I am. Can I'm I tell you where I am? Time. Here's where I am. I am here, 20% of me, uh, it's, I'm a host. On my job, I want to be good at hosting, not just the show, but a, literally a person in my living room. But having done this for... I feel like I'm getting really good at podcasting. Okay. And I have been forced to do something I normally wouldn't have done that you could maybe connect to, which is watch all of these interviews because I've been editing them. Yeah. I have help now, but the first whole bunch, I'm edit and I'm watching myself. Can mm -hmm. we shut the fuck up, Rick? Yeah. Let him talk. Yeah. You're boring. You've talked about this already. Mm -hmm. Your hair looks bad. Everything's mm -hmm. bad. And then I got to a point where I saw me interrupting. I saw me looking bad, and I thought, yeah, that's what I do. <laughs> you know, that's your thing. Yeah, that's my thing. That's your thing. I, yeah, I don't know. So I graduated to now in these moments feeling myself feeling insecure. I'm still working on this, but mm -hmm. I'm feeling insecure. Am I not being funny? Do they not feel whatever? And then it doesn't affect me as much now. Yeah. Because you're articulating it. Well, the biggest reason, which is a cheat, <clears throat> which is who gives a fuck? Mm -hmm. It's just another episode. Right. Like who cares? Right. But you get to do this. You know, that's how I would feel if on, you know, Brooklyn and I have a moment with Boyle where like, I could have nailed that joke better. Who gives a fuck? We did 153. This is my only time here and, uh, on your podcast. The amount so of the viewers. amount of spotlight and magnifying is like, well, I gotta kind of Chris Light gotta that's all give, perspective. Give, gotta give good interview. I got interesting stories, and I and I'm you know throwing out little, little bubbles of I, do it do I, I also it, like I'm not making any sense. You know, the amount of people that see one of your jokes on Brooklyn Nine Nine is probably a little more than double the amount of people are going to see here. Millions of people are watching I know, this. but as, as someone who is uh, a problematic uh, perfectionist in terms of how he presents himself in this, uh, in, in this biz, uh, mm -hmm. you know, this is tough. So but back to what I was saying, how yeah. I'm feeling. I'm watching you feel a way of the way I often do feel. Yeah. And I, it's reminding me mm -hmm. how uncomfortable it makes people. <laughs> it's reminding me how how comfortable I am, and uh, like like I'm feeling good, like good for me. Yeah, good. Like if I'm, I hope you do feel comfortable because I'm watching you talk about stuff that I would have, I would feel uncomfortable talking uh, about, oh, uh -huh. and and knowing maybe incorrectly, but still the confidence of knowing. No, this is great. Yeah, like I'm, you you were saying how you're not in the pocket now because you're being vulnerable and blah blah blah, and it's like. That's awesome. Yeah. Especially no, it because is. I've seen yeah. you doing so many things and you're it so is. goofy and I identify myself as a goofball. Mm -hmm. So it's nice to see goofy people feel uncomfortable feel, yeah. not being goofy. Yeah. I, and, and, but even that's misleading because I, I'm not like goofy all the time in, in, in real life. Like, <laughs> see, I can't. listen, man, in real life, I'm, I'm not. <laughs> But we'll be right back with a word from our sponsor. For the idiots out there that don't know what Bitcoin is, I advise you put on a hat and get out of your bubble because it's the future, baby. That was good. I started investing in a cryptocurrency early 2016. And for better or worse, I have almost all of my money invested into it. I have to admit, I've spent a lot of time on it. There is a very large learning curve. But did you know that Bitcoin ATMs are the preferred way to purchase Bitcoin with cash? Excuse me. Now that we're talking about cash, I could avoid the anonymity issues and I could reveal my real face. Ooh, I like that transition. 
Thecoinbros.com have Bitcoin ATMs all throughout the country and offer instant buys with 24-hour customer service through email or phone. At thecoinbros.com, you could purchase Bitcoin as well as other cryptocurrencies. Buying Bitcoin doesn't have to be intimidating. The Coin Bros Bitcoin ATMs are here to help. Yeah, we're back. Yeah. Yeah. How do you feel? Uh, forget how people are going to see Wait, you. Hold on, hold on. No. <laughs> hold on. Imagine. I feel like I, I, haven't, I haven't finished a thought yet. Okay. Um, God damn, I hate you, Rick Glassman. I hate you for doing this. I hate you for doing this to me. I hate it. I, I'm in real life. I'm not really that uh, uh, goofy. I, yeah. I, I'm a funny guy, but I, I'm not super. I'm not always on. I don't. You know, I'm not always on. Uh, that's a mistake. It is. Or should I, I say that's a mustache? Uh, it is. A, it is a, a a stash and a half. I like how that one was kind of creeping up your nose there. Yeah, me too. Um, I love mustache comedy. Stash com. Stash com. That's a good mm -hmm. shirt. Mm -hmm. It's, a, it's an okay shirt. Yeah, let's not like get too excited about it. If I, I were mean, making multiple shirts an episode, I'd be like, okay. Yeah, yeah. Are you okay that you came over and or did this with me and are doing this with me? I am okay with it. Um, I feel like uh, I'm. I'm okay with it. I just, I just hope it's entertaining. Yeah, <laughs> I'm seeing an Italian man that I've never seen as a Jewish man. Be a Jewish man right I, now. I, I really am. There is a, you know, maybe because I, you know, I, was, I did some therapy today. Maybe that's why. Maybe did I'm you come from therapy today? Not straight from, but uh, yeah, but uh, earlier this morning. It could be it, you know. Uh, yeah, I'm an Italian man. Yeah. <laughs> oh, boy. Yeah. Let me see if the cameras are still going. <laughs> they are. Yeah, uh, I'm an Italian I'm, man I'm, is the I'm, name I'm, of this episode. <laughs> I want to know so far, because I can't think of one. What clip you're going to tease this episode with? What's up, Glassman Boppers? It's Rick Glassman here. And boy, do I have a surprise for you. We have a special guest in the house. It's me. Ah. I really bailed on that one. Can I tell you what happened? Yeah. I, even though you said it earlier, never know how to say your last name. Latrugi, Latruglio. Could, uh, it's, it's, you could say it any way you want. Here, here's, the, here's the boring history on that. Uh, could you uh, make it a little exciting? A little bit. Maybe with voices? It's, uh, it's, it's Lo Trulio. La Trulio. Lo, Lo Trulio. Lo Trulio. Right? However, I found that out uh, late in life. Late in life. Around 22, my grandfather told me that's how it's pronounced. Now, up until that point, most of my friends, including most of the people in the state, call me Lo Truglio. Mm. That's also okay. Uh, so it could be Latruglio or Latrulio. Either one is, is correct. What do you guys think? If you think it's Latrulio, put in the comments. Hey, guys. If you think it's Latrugio, put in the comments. Not, not, not Trugi. Not Trugio. I'm just saying if they think that. We're going to give three That's options. That's not even uh, three options then. You have to say if three If you think options. it's Latruglio, yeah. then uh, put in the comments, uh, man, I wouldn't, mind, I wouldn't mind getting some of that. But yeah. if you think it's Latruglio, Latruglio, put in the comments, uh, Great podcast, guys, and then we could tally them up. Yeah, that'll be great. That, you know, we'll see. We'll see. We'll see what they say. Um, <laughs> you know. You know. Maybe just like straight interview. Let's try a straight yeah. interview question. Great. All right, maybe. I'm going to do it now. I'm going to do it now. All right. This is this is something I do need to work on. So this is perfect. Okay. Good. I'm going to do it. Joe Latru Latrugio Latrulio. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. uh, you're from New York, yeah. Mm -hmm. Queens, Ozone Park. So, I see now. Now it's I tough. understand why you avoid it. It's I tough. I, now I'm yeah. thinking. I didn't ask what part of New York. Yeah. <laughs> Are you taking control? Yeah. Yeah. So you you got a, your your big break in in the state. Is that correct with David Wayne? I see why you don't want to do it like this. Okay. Did you come did, from the therapist, or did you just get your tonsils taken out? I, I see why this is uh, why this is problematic. Are you saying because I'm bad at it? Yeah, I get no uh, because <laughs> because I don't know if you're bad. Like we don't know each other that well, right? No. So like you know the the bits, you know there there's bits, and then there's like uh, you're at, are you asking me the question? And I'm just trying right. to measure. And I Ooh, and I like good. I like bits good. as well. 
I'm just, you I'm get, just you, you I get confused you sometimes. Get, see, that's, like, that's so like, an you, are we doing bits? Or are we do, just doing straight interview? That, that's why all those questions on the Instagram I'm asking you, like, what kind of what kind of podcast? Because I want to give you what you want, right? And what I know. want, and this is very corny but very s- sincere, is to capture a conversation with you. And wow. sometimes they're very serious. Sometimes they're bonkers silly. And I do like a good. M- middle yeah but you put the putting the mustache on back and forth that's bonkers silly that's not a to you that's bonkers silly that's not a, a normal conversation let's have one right now yeah. talking about this yeah so, so like I, why like you know why uh, do the mustache i'll thing? tell you i connect very strongly with people through bits right okay and it isn't what the joke is meaning the lie it isn't mustache no mustache fake interview real interview it's not that it's literally connecting on frequency Right. Okay. And I've said this on so many podcasts of mine that every time I say it, I open it by saying I've said this on other podcasts. This is my first time doing that double brief. Got it. (laughs) But it is, I don't find jokes and because people would say to me my whole life, I never know when you're joking and being serious. I get it. And I don't find jokes and sincerity to be mutually exclusive. Ah. To me, doing bits is very serious. I mean, it's literally my living. Right. I see. But you have to be on the same frequency with a person, and they have to be in that mood, and we don't know each other yet. Right. So I feel sometimes poorly that because we're on camera, it, it kind of de- it were defined, we're going to do some bits. Yeah. It makes sense. We're here. We're doing yeah. bits. But also, what you're saying makes sense. You don't know me. We right. don't know what we're doing. Right. I'm not interviewing you. This is helpful to me, though. Mm-hmm. This is, uh, like, I understand that, that, that you're being very real with me. You're like, I connect through bits. Well, I understand that. I, I don't. But now we understand yeah. why we both, I was, I was sweating it and stumbling and, and in the beginning because I, I didn't know right. how to connect with you. I didn't realize the bits were part of your language of, commu- you know, your language of, right. of connecting with someone, right? So, uh, you know, it's hard. And as a comedian, obviously, I want to, help my fellow comedian but i don't quite know yeah i would the humor yet yeah. you know what i mean i hate the idea of thinking that you're gonna a person opposite me yeah. would do a bit because they want to help me out like right, right. it's and, like i don't want to put I, anybody me it, or you in that position right but i do but uh, but in a large sense i do want to help you out like i wouldn't be here if i didn't sure. like you uh, so that's why it was that's that's why it was con- a little confusing you know and also i didn't know about that you said that you're that you're not very silly all the time. Yeah. But what I know of you is either watching you in movies or TV right. or working with you on set making movies. Yes. And also, you are attached to David Wayne to me, right? Right. right. It's, it's yeah. where I first saw you. It's literally where I met you. I, I got to watch your podcast with David because David Wayne is exactly you. David Wayne communicates in bits. We uh, we talked about on How the podcast. Does that. this ever get you in trouble? Do people not know? And more importantly, do you not know that they don't know? Because I, most of my life, I'm doing bits, and the other person is doing some, a lot, none, but I know that they know I'm being hysterical. And it wasn't until the past few years that I started to realize that, oh, they don't want to be doing this, but they're not telling me. Right, right. So I'm getting better at recognizing that. That's good. And I thought, I'm not great, because I thought I was riding the pocket, and I thought you were uncomfortable because of the subject matter, but you were uncomfortable because you weren't connected with me. Yeah. Fuck. Yeah. But how will you how will you know that? Like you can't I'm not being know perfect. that. Yeah, yeah, I know. Well, and God, I am on. Damn it, you're, you're trying. I know. That's all right. But it is it is hard to do, especially uh, it um, being it, connecting, it, with connecting with people on something like this yeah. uh, because you don't really know how they speak. Like David Wayne, for example, who I love uh, dearly, and uh, you know, in the beginning. Uh, I, I remember, I remember instances where, uh, you, you know, David would, what you're checking. I am checking. Yeah. I'm, I'm just the, checking the cameras. The, the, um, that, um, uh, you know, he would do like a bit or, or say something <laughs> when we were first wor- in, working in the state and the whole group. And I remember thinking like, what? <laughs> <laughs> what? <laughs> and then it took me years to be like, it was right. a joke. You know, I feel like me, I feel like Ben, is like with serious in that way. Like I think he would confuse Ben and I sometimes. Like, uh, or or just like, oh god, just like just let's like he'll do a bit when when we don't want the bit when we. Could you we, think of an example? No, I, I no, no, no. It's so long ago, and and also now I love every 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 bit he does. Now now 
Because you know his language. I know his language, right. and we're connected, and we always will be connected, I right. hope. In, in the beginning, you don't know. <laughs> you, you know, know I, I, mean? like, I felt I that. connected immediately with, like, uh, Marino, uh, immediate connection uh, from, from the get-go. What was the difference? Because he... He's Italian. I, but I, he's, no, a, bit, that's he's a, a bit factory. That's, that's a joke. Uh, um, I, I think he... I don't know. I, 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 there was a warmth and friendliness and, and sensitivity to yeah. other uh, people's feelings and strangers' feelings that... That David didn't have inherently to you. No, no. Right. Um, and David's an incredibly sensitive person and compassionate person. But like Ken, I think, wears it on a sleeve. You're easy to pick up on. You know, I didn't like... Uh, I talk about this all the time. You know, Tom Lennon and I didn't click at, at first. We, we didn't, you know... Uh, Tom was uh, too arrogant, narcissistic, and uh, the exact opposite. Couldn't be a more generous person, uh, a kinder person, a funny, like, uh, you know, it's all that, how do you connect with the person off the bat, you yeah. know? Um, the You know, every, everyone in, on, uh, um, on Brooklyn, uh, I connect with very well now. There wasn't too much- From the beginning? From, from the beginning, always from the beginning, uh, I got along. But like, you know, you know, with Terry Crews, who is an incredibly large personality, when I first met Terry, I was like, is, mm. is this for real? Like, is this, is this authentic? I mean, he's, he's the energy of the level of the, uh, and So and if the it was not real, but, what would that but, mean? But, 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 and the fact is it, it was real. What, what it means is that, oh, it's, oh, it's an act. He's, uh, he's, I see, there's different sides of him, um, um, but what does an it, act mean? You mean it's not real? Like ha him coming in being a big personality, is this real? And like, what's fake? Because that could, is, you could is energy. No, no, no. You could come on and 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 say like uh, uh, put on an act that where you're you're always in control you're always funny you're always confident you're always happy you always got energy that that you know oh, and you can do that convince it from one he yeah not how he treats you oh yeah 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 not how he treats who he is. You know, and so, you know, you can, as a, as a personality, it's not just an acting, you can go into an office building and give a persona. Right. And, and then when you're home with your friends, you're a, a little different, mm -hmm. a, a lesser version of that, perhaps, or you see a side that's softer or whatever, yeah. that you're like, oh, I see a lot of that is, you know, work thing. <clears throat> and, you know, with, with Terry, I found both, you know, in, in, um, on, on set, when we're in interviews, between interviews, when we're, we need to hang out, do press, like he is just a genuine person, and so that was a, that was a surprise. So it's a trust me. factor. It's trusting yeah, the person yeah. to let them be a certain way. Yeah. Are you? Do you have brothers, sisters? I have a younger brother. Yeah. How much younger? Just four years. Yeah. Yeah. I, I, I want to know if that like that's a great perspective for me mm. of the way I am being, my energy, my jokes work better if the person trusts me and i wonder yeah. is that a is that a you having a trust issue thing or i don't think so as we are, you're telling me more i think yeah like when i'm watching it's it's it's, it's stand-up but when you're watching a stand-up comedian you want them to if somebody goes up on stage i've never seen before yeah and gets me to laugh a certain laugh uh, yeah. i like this person now it's theirs to lose okay. they have me right uh, I remember that there was a, there was an interview with um, what the fuck? It was a late <clears throat> night. Uh, it was Carson. It was Johnny Carson, mm -hmm. and he was talking about Bob Newhart, and he said um, that when Bob Newhart goes on stage, uh, he has the audience already because mm -hmm. they trust. I'm associating real life with this comedy idea because they trust him, so they want to laugh. They're not like, who's this guy? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Sh show me what you got, Tom Hanks. Yeah, you know, you know, there's a there's yeah. a lot of examples like that. It makes sense what you say too. Like, all right, if you that guy's got me, I, he, you know, it's it's his to lose. Yeah. That that resonates with me. I, I get that. That makes sense to me. But but the mistake is uh, not the mistake, but the mislead is you may not ever meet him that stand up that you saw, right? right? What happens, this, you know, the minute he gets off stage and you run into each other backstage, yes. then you're on well, a different mixing, energy. Mixing level. worlds, but I'm saying just like getting to know an act. Yeah. I'm saying I could connect to getting on stage and getting off stage. If that's the only window these people meet me, how am I my most efficient? Uh -huh. And much like David Wayne, and it's why I love him and connect to him so strongly, there's a fine line between letting people in on it and ruining the joke. 
So, yeah. you know, you, 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 I don't want to wink to the audience that this isn't real because now there's nothing to play. But at right, the same right. time, I want them to know what I'm playing. Right, right. And what David and I talked about was the luxury of doing a movie is we know we're watching a movie. We know these are characters. Yeah. You know, we, yeah. I don't think that Robert Downey Jr. is Iron Man, but I buy into mm -hmm. it. But yeah. if he, he is dressed as Iron Man and then looks to camera and says, I'm an actor, yeah. we're out. Right, right. But in real life, it's not just on stage. So what I am think my problem is, and this is a fun perspective when I don't connect with somebody, is in my head, I know who I am. Mm -hmm. I trust me. I know what I'm doing. I'm a yeah. good guy. I know I'm sensitive. I'm sincere. I'm, I'm empathetic and all the things where, so you know it. Yeah. You know me. Yeah. You now follow me on Instagram, so you have to know everything about me. Right, right. But you right. don't. Right. And right. I need to basically have an opening joke or an opening sincerity. Yeah. Where... Yeah. I, I mean, and that's helpful. I think also I, I, I don't know where this comes from, whether it was just early in life and high school or people in high school that I saw that rubbed me the wrong way. Just like the, this idea of, of always being funny or always doing being on or always doing bits. I've, I've always found uh, abrasive uh -huh. I've, um, in that, in that it's like, because it always comes off as a, as a screaming insecurity to me. Mm -hmm. uh, always comes off. So anything that's always, you're saying? No. Oh, because I thought that was very poetic. When someone is always something, it seems like it's coming from an insecurity. I think you could put that formula in. Oh, yeah, right. But uh, Or even very often or frequently yeah, yeah. when it's like... You know, we can, we, you know, you could turn it off. Well, it absolutely that is. That's why I connected so strongly with the value. And do I belong? It's this idea that I have been working heavily on of there's more, there's more value I have to offer than being funny. A lot of times it cannibalizes my value because now it's too much. Right. So I get that. Right. Did I cut you off? No. I was, I, no I'm just kind of letting it sink in and seeing if I had anything else to add to that. Because sometimes you meet some one, meet somebody, I'll meet somebody that's on the same frequency as me, my buddy John Dewalt, who I told you about before, to where what he's doing, I've seen before. What he's doing, what I'm doing, he's seen before, literally in each other. Right. So there was like in the bits, it was so connected. I'm trusting this person knows me. This yeah. person reads me. I right. read them. I know them. Right. And just because somebody isn't on the same frequency doesn't mean that you can't connect strongly. It's just a different language. Yeah, yeah. Uh, that I would agree with, too. Yeah. And I could get lazy trying to, like, I, I, I know my language. You know your language. I like my language. <clears throat> you should like your language. I like my language um, as well. It's, it's, it's figuring out the language of each other yeah. quickly within, yeah. you know, an intro or, you know, a couple minutes. So it feels natural and like we're actually talking. About can I ask things. for a piece, a little piece of advice? Please, um, I'll give what I can. Okay, so we started this podcast off, and I'm not sure how I'm editing this. I don't remember. I do right. remember where I recorded, so I believe this is in there. You come down, you sit down, and yeah. we talk for a few minutes before I tell you the truth in a joke, but the truth, which is, I hate making intros. Yes, I'm doing a bit, and I'm revealing to you an actual thing that is you an, an actual obstacle of my life. My Sundays. Yeah. All day now, I have to, I, I, and I'm editing. Why does it take so long to do an intro? What a, can you tell, like, hey, Joe Luchillo, he's on Brooklyn Nine Nine. You might know him. He was in a movie, Super Bad, yeah. and uh, I was in a group called The State. And my podcast just takes forever. I see. People, people, I have peers that have podcasts that are way more successful than mine. They put one camera on, they start, uh -huh. they stop, they give it to somebody, they take a couple of things out, they record an intro, they're out. Right. I am dumping these. This I, I put. So much time into this podcast, obsessively. That's why it's probably so great. I do believe that's why I get a lot of good. I, other people on their podcasts are like talking about the production value of my podcast. It feels great. Yeah. But I feel like I bit off something that like now I have to keep doing it this oh, way. Oh, I see. Yeah. So the intros, I want to it's have like Christmas cards. Yeah. It's Once you start sending them, now you're going to do them every year. Yep. That's why uh, Beth and I, we never do it. The, 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 the idea of precedence yeah. is, 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 you're, you're, is committing to... And that's great that you guys don't do it. Yeah. And if you do do it, my suggestion to you is take a picture on an iPhone. Don't worry about the lighting. Write something. That's it, right? Relax. Yeah. Yeah. I'm, I'm sending out Christmas about, cards every week. Can we talk about week. something that was driving me crazy with Christmas? Yes. Take down your fucking lights in your tree. You got one week after New Year's. That's it. So you're saying January 7th. 
at most, it should come down. It should come down before New Year's Eve, I think. But if you have the audacity to think you're gonna you're gonna shove joy and mirth down my, f- we've already done it. There's more to life. This is my war on Christmas. Mm-hmm. Take down your lights. First week of January. Enough's enough. I don't want to look at them anymore. Okay, it'll come again next year. I have two questions. Yeah. First and least importantly, define mirth. Well, mirth is um, the cross between um, hmm. the earth and mm. Mm. okay. And second and most importantly, uh, did you just make that up? <laughs> nope. Okay. It's in the dictionary. Do you? Uh, I've heard people complain about this: mm-hmm. the Christmas trees. I don't have a point of view on it. Leave them yeah. up all year. I don't care. Why? Why, well, Mike? Same question. Yeah, like, like you know, well, why do you care? I'll tell you why I care because it's it's people are in this illusion that holidays last forever or good feeling, you know, it lasts for it should last forever, but it doesn't. Okay, <sighs> like we like this yeah. is like it's you know it's okay for the day not to be special and still have a special day. Like you're not you're not elongating any any um, <sighs> mirth. A, any mirth, things end, things end, and it's good that they end. And let's let's not pretend something is there when it's not but there. But what if it does let's make them feel better? Let's not live in a bubble. Check this out, and and this is this is deep. And I, I I could I could anticipate the person opposite, not you, the person opposite me, feeling defensive because of this analogy. I'm not putting anything on you. This is just an analogy. Okay. okay. Homosexuals. Mm-hmm. Okay. They're going around, they're doing their thing. They're having sex. Mm-hmm. Some uh, guys are sucking other guys' penises and girls are eating other girls' vaginas. That's a, kind of the definition mm-hmm. in the more uh, crass. Sure. Let them, let them do it. If in their house, now this, again, this, I'm not saying that you're anti this, mm-hmm. but if in their house, to me, the equivalent of keeping a Christmas tree light up on January 8th is like the windows being open and me sucking your cock. Listen, you... It doesn't have to be Christmas to suck a dick. You see, hear that, Betty? It does not have to. No, I'm just kidding. She's fantastic. see. This is this is the disconnect okay. again. All right. So we go into the bit on homophobia and homosexuality off of like I'm trying to understand. I thought that's where you were going. Like, why does it matter that it bugs me that like people keep their Christmas? Well, that's up? what I'm saying. It's none why of your business. No, no. It's different than like being a homophobe than like being someone that's like, let's move on. It's none of my business, correct. That's where correct. I'm comparing. Correct, it's none of my business. That's all I'm saying. But me saying, hey, you shouldn't be gay, and hey, you know what, Christmas is over, take down your trees. I feel like the level- The stakes is, are, are worlds are, are, apart. Are, 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 are apart there. The stakes are worlds apart, and there's where I was trying to set up. I want to talk about this without a Here's the thing, like a person who is a homosexual is like that their entire life. Yeah. Right? Yeah. A person that wants it to be Christmas all the time is a person who's delusional and not in tune with reality and uh, not connected to the real world. Here's my argument. You say that a homosexual is a homosexual their whole life, whereas somebody who keeps Christmas up is trying to keep it up for too long. I would say, what if their whole life, their parents' whole life, their grandparents' whole life, their tradition was Christmas tree on December 1st till February 19th. And their whole life, they have it up a little longer. You know why? Because I'll tell you, sometimes the winter months are a bit bleak and mm-hmm. I want some light. Mm-hmm. I don't know. Maybe I'm old fashioned. Here's, here's, here's what I'll say to that. You got a Christmas tree in your house that you have up to February 19th? I'm not in your house. I don't got to look at it. Oh, you're saying the light's outside? Yeah. Often the Christmas tree is in the bay window and you see it in as well. Okay, but I'm specifically talking about candy canes on the lawn and the lights on the rim. Take it down. You're making you're making yourself look like someone who is not a part of the the, the everyday calendar here. Okay, listen, I I, I agree with what I understand. What is so what wrong saying. with things not being Christmas? It'll come again. It's this. What is this attachment? 
I could It'll already see people leaving the comments saying, Rick, he's right. Um, fuck people who oh, have I was this thing up. I, was, I thought you were going to say like, fuck this guy. Like, yeah, I like Christmas. I want to be Christmas. No, oh, yeah, I, like m- more people, if not all people, except for the people that leave the trees up until February 19th, huh? are going to agree with you. I'm not saying you're wrong. What mm-hmm. I'm questioning is yeah. this strong point of view that so many people have. Let them have the fucking Christmas lights no. up. No, because you're because when when I drive past the house okay. that still has the Christmas decorations on yeah. and it's the end of January, I wonder... I wonder if everything is as healthy emotionally in that house as what could be. As you did when you first met Terry Crews, you wondered, is this real? Mm -hmm. But you know what you found out? You get to know those people. Yeah. They like the lights. Yeah. I mean, it's a good point. They, you know, maybe it's giving them something that they don't have unless they have the lights up and they feel like it's still Christmas. But I feel sad because there's more out there. They might be seeing it. Mm-hmm. In fact, they might be seeing it, and then after they saw it, they pull into their driveway and they think, what a great day I just had. Ah, oh, I love the lights. I guess. What if they were all white and not multicolored? It doesn't matter. It doesn't matter what color your lights are. It doesn't matter if yeah. you're gay or straight, as doesn't long matter. as your Christmas tree is down by the latest January 7th. That's yeah, what you're and, and I got to say, you know, I try to get it down before then, guys. Right. You know, please, guys. Please. When did you take yours down? I took mine down, uh, let's see. December 26th. <laughs> it, was, it was pretty close. I think I took it down, uh, yeah, the, the December like 28th or 29th around there. Yeah. My mom uh, uh, loves, she ch- ch- changes the house constantly. She loves doing it. Yeah. In the basement, there's the pumpkins, there's the skeletons, there's the elves, there's, yeah. everything is down there. Yeah. And I remember I was home last year for Thanksgiving, on Thanksgiving, Thursday afternoon, we're setting up for a company to come over, a family to come over. And while my mom finished that pretty early, so now she's getting rid of the Thanksgiving stuff to put Mm. up whatever would be next. I don't even know what it is. After Thanksgiving? Yeah, because we're not Christian. Right. But she still puts like, she still has a Santa Claus and a, you know, stuff. So my dad's on on his chair watching my mom. And I've always noticed this stuff and it's cute. It's what it is. I don't care. But I never thought about anybody else noticing it or their opinions. And my dad, who doesn't, my dad, change the house, paint the house, fill it with water, whatever, Debbie, you do a great job. He doesn't care. But he's sitting there. My mom takes the, takes a pumpkin down, but Thanksgiving hasn't even happened yet. Yeah. And he, and he, Debbie, why are you taking everything down now? Thanksgiving isn't even over yet. And she said, I don't want it up too long. Mm -hmm. And it's just making me think. I like your mom. Love. I like your mom a lot. She's here. <laughs> I know it's a big bit, and thank you for waiting here for a couple of days. It was People. worth it. <laughs> yeah. That's a bit worth waiting for. Mm-hmm. Um, I can relate to your mom very well with that. Like, you know, you don't want to extend your stay. And then also, to add to that, I see people, honest, I saw a house right after Halloween. People hate this. Before Thanksgiving, even. With Before Christmas. Thanksgiving, the Christmas tree was up. Yeah. I'm like, I don't know why. I, I'm gonna look at that. I, I, you know, I'm gonna own, I'm gonna own how emotional I'm getting. Like, Seriously, I will look into that. And I don't know what that's about, but it really drives me crazy. And I don't know if it's. Be- I think it has something to do with like, just enjoy the day in the moment for what it is now. But right? why? Why? Wh- but why, why do you need other people to enjoy their moment your way? Because I, they're, they're, I'm not. I'm not enjoying my moment because I'm looking at the the Christmas tree the day after Halloween. Now let me talk to somebody else, not you. Let me talk to this piece of shit over here. Okay, this homophobic fucking piece of shit. Hey man, why do you care what these other people are doing? Why is that getting in the way of your day? Anyway, you know what? I don't even want to talk to you. Get the fuck out of here. Bye. Anyway, how are you? Do you know what I'm saying? Well, how could somebody else's lights, how could the brightness of somebody else's lights dim your own? Because I see a delusional person that's looking for something else. And? And that bothers me. I, I, that bothers me. Check this out. And let's, let's just wrap that it up That bothers this. me because... You, uh, you see somebody look at... You see somebody delusional? I hate when people aren't aware of things. They, it drives me 
crazy, especially in this climate. It just drives me nuts. But you don't know they're not aware. They may say to themselves, here's what I bet. I bet this conversation happens. Hey, uh, Brittany, uh, first of all, I love you. I had the best Christmas. Two weeks ago was fantastic. I got to tell you something. I'm having a hard time. The guys in the neighborhood are making fun of us because we had the lights up. And and I get it, I know, but it makes me feel good. I don't know, do I take it down for them or do I leave it up for me? And she goes, honey, I, I, I don't know what to tell you. This seems like a tough situation. We're both so aware of this, but we like the lights. What about that conversation that you're not seeing? I think that's real. I think that's fair. And all I can say is uh, good for them. I want people to enjoy the Christmas lights. If they want to come up all year, that's fine. It will never cease to annoy me. And um, I'm going to do my own work on myself and, and, and try to bring it in and, uh, and figure out where that's coming from. Now, I would be remiss if I didn't end this, po- if I ended this podcast before I asked the question that I already see everybody typing up right now. Mm-hmm. If you had to pick, and this is a hypothetical. Sure. Okay. If you had to pick, what would you prefer? People putting their Christmas trees up on November 1st, mm-hmm. after Halloween, mm-hmm. but before Thanksgiving, but taking them down before the new year, Mm -hmm. or Mm -hmm. would you rather them put their Christmas tree up on, 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 uh, on cyber Monday after Mm -hmm. Thanksgiving and they take it down mid January, Uh, mid January, mid to end January 20th, the former November 1st. You know why? Because that's what you'd rather. I'd rather because we're in the holiday season. Even if it starts really like fine, but, but come for me, come, New Year's Eve, we're done with the holidays. Done with the holidays. We're starting the new year. Hey, it's a brand new year. Let's do a resolution, no resolution. That doesn't matter, but it's a brand new year. That's all in the past. Oh, what a great holiday. Let's start our diet or not, whatever. But we're done with the presents. We're done with like interacting uh, with the dysfunctional families. And let's just move on. Interesting. Interesting. You want to move on, not from the lights, but from those families. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay. Well, I would love if you're willing to come back sometime. I'd love to have you back uh, when I have my Christmas tree up. Uh, I, last year I did, I set a precedence. Uh-huh. I did eight nights of Tyso. I did eight episodes in eight nights. It was Ooh. bonkers. It was so much work for me. Yeah. And I was so happy with it. And I had a Christmas tree up, which I've never had once with a girlfriend who's Christian. We could get it another time. Sure. And I, it was a set. And when I was done, I still left it up for a little bit because I loved it. Sure. I would love to ha- talk to you about as your long dysfunctional as family. As long as in the Christmas uh, season. You know, as long as it's in the Christmas season. You know. So I like that. I like you, what you're saying is the fourth quarter of the year, whether Halloween, Thanksgiving, Hanukkah, Christmas, whatever it is, put your trees, your pumpkins, your skeletons, your crosses. Get them all together. Do it when you need to. Yeah. But on January 2nd, I'm done with my family. <laughs> I, feel like, I feel like we're leaving this podcast on a very inaccurate... <laughs> An unfair note. Well, Dr. <laughs> Drew, know. again, I am so sorry what he said earlier. And I feel like I haven't really been represented well here. All right. Well, you know what? Since we couldn't find an intro, mm-hmm. let's find a nice... Outro? Yeah. What kind, What type of tone do you want? We'll put in like do a little patriotic music, a little something sweet and sensitive, maybe something to get people going. What kind of feeling are you having? Yeah. Like, let's get out there and uh, get out there and go get them. Like, let's I'll go know. out there and get them music. Yeah. Before we do it, why don't you tell people your Instagram where they could see you? Uh, oh, uh, 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 Joe Latrulio. Uh, you know, very, I'll put it up. Put it up there. Things people know both on Twitter and um, uh, IG. All right. So uh, uh, yeah, tell me. Give us some. Give us a little bit, and we'll uh, cue the music now. I just want to let everyone know that if there was anything I said in this podcast that may have gotten you down, may have offended you, may have uh, made you think twice about ever listening to a joke I say or looking at my face again. I apologize, but I want you to remember that you got to live your own life. Mm. You got to let the things that annoy you annoy you, and you got to let people live how they want to live. But that doesn't mean you can't judge how they live. Nope. No, you said it right. You guys, thank you so much for tuning in. Take your shoes off. Remember, mirth, it's a combination of earth and mm, Mm. and, uh, you know, sleep with who you want to sleep with, but make sure your lights are down by the 8th. Is that what you're saying? Well, it's you have to pick a date with the latest. Seventh. Down on the seventh. Yeah. All right. Thanks. You guys. heard it here first. Down on the seventh. Scoot do. Mwah. It's great. What? Should, I hope so. Do. I hope you know. I feel there's some real moments. Blabbity blue.